Hey students, Ranger Pine here. Um, these are strange times we're living in. So I know a lot of you guys are uh, kind of stuck at home, um, but you're not stuck inside. And you know, if you can get out into your yard uh, or safely into your neighborhood or a park nearby, uh, it's probably a good idea to get moving a little bit and to try to connect with nature, connect with spring. We've got a lot of things happening right now. We've got a lot of birds returning. Um, we've got a lot of wildflowers popping out here. So um, even if you can't make it out to the mountain park or if you can't make it down to the nature center, um, both are really good places, lots of fresh air, lots of space. You can keep six feet apart. But um, there's a lot of there's a lot of really fun stuff out here going on, and there's a lot of beauty out here. Nature and spring are not canceled, so I encourage you to get out, enjoy your world, unplug. I know a lot of us are doing a lot of online stuff right now, but you gotta remember you need to move your body, and you need to get outside and connect with nature, get some fresh air, get some sunshine. So I'm going to take you out a little bit. We're going to look for some wildflowers and uh, kind of examine those a little bit. Whoa, look at that lichen. Ooh, look at this little fern-like plant. Wow. Oh, deer scat. You guys probably missed that, huh? Whoa, that's cool. forest wildflowers you're gonna to want to look for uh, color right spots of color that's what things uh, pollinators like bees and other insects that's what they're gonna be honing in on look at this we got beautiful this is a pulsatia or a pask flower and a pask the word pask uh, has to do with Easter this comes up a lot around Easter time um, this is a perennial. It's really strong. It overwinters. A perennial, that means that it's a, a plant that will come up every year. This, this same plant will um, grow and blossom right here every year. So we call that kind of a plant a perennial. Now an annual is a different term. And an annual is a plant that only grows for one year. And it dies... Um, it won't come up again, but this is like a hardy overwintering perennial. Um, it's got it's usually six to eight individual deep blue or purple, um, what look like petals. This is a strange plant. Those are actually sepals, but um, they're petal-like sepals. They kind of uh, operate in the same way. And um, if it gets sunny out here, for a while, this flower will open up and it uh, attracts and reflect, reflects a lot of sunlight and warmth in the pollinating insects like that. Um, I don't know if we can look inside here or not. I really don't want to pry flowers open. I'm not into doing that, but um, if we can just open it up a little bit. Let's see inside there, there are a lot, there we go, you can see that there are probably 150 to 200 tightly arranged yellow stamen in there, and at the very center of that, surrounded by that sta those stamen, you're going to find there's a a bundle, like a singular bundle of many pistils with their long styles sticking up. And that's going to be um, the white part you can see in there. So the yellow or the stamen, that's going to be, you could kind of think of this as this flower has uh, male parts and female parts. This is kind of how it's going to reproduce. Um, the yellow parts are going to make the pollen. And then that white part there, that's kind of like the female part the pistol and when the pollinating insects get in here they move all that stuff around and they move the pollen to the from the stamen to the pistol and that's going to activate this flower 
So if this flower is, is successful in attracting pollinators, um, it's going to produce a nice um, seed head. This entire flower will um, collapse and turn into uh, like a big fluffy fuzzy ball of seeds with feathery plumes and uh, it kind of looks like one of Dr. Seuss's truffula trees but in miniature. Um, so those are cool. Later on in the year we'll see those. This is a very cool flower right now. Um, they usually don't grow in large clusters. You just find one or two here and there, um, but it's, it's a very beautiful one. It's one of the first, uh, it's kind of like the second flower, wildflower that I see out here in the mountain park. The first flower is the spring beauty, and I'm, I'm hoping to find some of those, but we've had a couple of cold, rainy, snowy days, and they stay kind of closed on those days. They like warm, sunny days, so. Um, but if I find some in a sunny area that's, that are open, I'll show you those. Fox poop on a rock. All right, so here are some spring beauties. Now, they're not open. Like I said, this is a kind of a gray day. We've had a couple of cold days, the snow. Um, these will open up very pretty. This is the first flower that comes up in the spring. I'm going to try to find an open one for you, but we'll take a look at this here. Uh, we can look at other parts of the flower, um, even if the blossom is not open. Uh, when that blossom is open, it'll be about, oh, like a third of an inch across, maybe like eight centimeters. Uh, it's going to have five petals. See, every one of these has five petals. They're kind of white or pink. Some of them are more white with little pink stripes, and some of them are, are kind of pink. Um, they, they vary a little bit. Uh, they're going to open up on warm, sunny days, and they stay closed during cloudy weather or at night. Um, they kind of nod downward like this when they're closed, and they'll kind of rise up when, they're, when they open up. They're going to bloom right about this time of year, um, very early, and they're very cool. Um, they have, let's see if we can look on the back side of these. They're gonna have two green sepals. So these are the sepals, these little green things that look like petals. And um, they can kind of, before this flower blossoms, before the petals come out, the petals are hidden inside these green ones. You can see there's um, a little cluster of them um, right in here that are not, they're not open right under here. They're not open yet. And all you see is the sepals on these. You can see a little bit of the petal peeking out of that one. Um, but then it's going to open up. If you look inside there, you're going to see that there's five stamen in there. And they're usually pink tipped. They have a pink pollen uh, top to those stamen. And the pistil, which you can't really see on this one, not to find an open one. Um, but if we could see the pistil, you might be able to see it in there. Uh, but it's kind of like got a three pronged pistil at the top of that. Uh, let's try to find some open ones. This is a really young dandelion. It hasn't produced a stalk or a flower yet, but. Um, dandelions, on their stalk, they don't have any leaves. It'll just be this, you know, single stalk that comes up. The uh, yellow blossom of the dandelion. Probably in Pueblo, there's some of them blooming at this point. Um, but out here, it's, uh, the growing season is a little later than that. Um, so the only leaves that the dandelion has is down here at the base of its of the plant. We call that a basal arrangement of leaves. So not basil like you would cook with, like, but basal, having to do with the base of the, the plant. I bet you can find some of those in your neighborhood, probably in your yard. 
A lot of people think of them as a weed, um, but they are actually a native wildflower, and they're, in a very, they're a very important flower. Uh, they are the first food, usually, for the honeybees when they come out of uh, their winter kind of dormancy. Um, and usually those bees are just, they're starving. And those are the first flowers they find, and it's going to be some of the stuff they make the first honey with. It's going to help them survive. Um, that's why it's kind of dangerous at this time of year to be putting, uh, or any time of year really, to, to put weed killing agents and chemicals on those kind of flowers because um, then the bees get that. They ingest that and uh, makes them sick and kill them. So it's always better if you can um, do a little work, get out there and, and dig up any dandelions that are growing in places that you don't want them to grow in. It's better than, than poisonous weed spray. Some uh, paper from a wasp's nest. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Gall wasp galls. There's a bunch of them here. That's cool. Well, I was unable to find a uh, spring beauty that's open right now just because of the, the cloudy weather we've been having. Uh, maybe another day of sunshine and they'll pop open. And um, they're really pretty. But anyway, um, hopefully you can get out to a, a natural environment. Hopefully you can maybe get out here to the mountain park or uh, the Nature and Wildlife Discovery Center's other facility, the, the Nature Center um, in Pueblo. Uh, the Raptor Center. Um, it's possible you could check those places out if you're if you're able to get out, and if you're able to be safe. But you know, safety first, right? Like we always said, we want to be safe. We want to have fun. So part of that's going to be taking care of yourself, respecting yourself, respecting other people. Um, be safe. Take all the precautions you need to. Um, these are strange times we're living in. Um, we're kind of stuck inside, but it doesn't mean we have to be stuck inside. We can get outside. Get into your yard, okay? Um, maybe safely into your neighborhood. Also, stay in touch with your friends. Um, you know, online, texting them. You know, you probably can play games together and things like that. But give them a call, too. Give them a call on the phone. Let them hear your voice, you know? We, uh, we kind of miss each other's voice and each other's laughter. There's a different kind of communication that happens when we're actually talking to somebody than when we're just texting them. So um, try to maintain that human connection with your friends, all right? You guys take care. We'll see you soon. Maybe summer camps.